Good evening. This is CTV News for Wednesday, June 19th. I'm Patricia Valone. Thank you for joining us. Well, a new fleet of private transportation vehicles arrives at the National Harbor's Gaylord Hotel. The on-site competition has dozens of drivers from independent taxicab companies unhappy about the new service. A major protest was held outside of the hotel today. CTV's Makia Turner has the story. Guests at the National Harbor's Gaylord Hotel now have another transportation option to choose from. It's called the Express Transport, and these independent cab drivers are outraged. Taxi, yes! Taxi, yes! Taxi, Nearly two yes. dozen drivers from an independent taxi cab company held a protest just outside of the Gaylord today. They hope to negotiate a stand for their service on hotel property. The hotel is doing it by pushing us out of the street. They bring in another vehicle to operate as a taxi. These drivers say they're no longer happy about operating out of the third level of this parking garage across the street. As you see, taxis standing behind the garage hidden from public view, and they're saying there's no public transportation in this area. Visibility isn't the only issue. This driver says the competition has put him at risk of losing his job. We, are, we used to work here the past five years. From a Monday, they kick us out. None of us, we don't have a job. We didn't make a living almost for three days. That's why we make a rally to tell the hotel, you know, we deserve to just to work there. A spokesperson for the hotel could not speak on camera, but says the company provided the new flat rate service in response to years of complaints about these cab drivers and their payment methods. A statement from the Gaylord National says we have learned that the transportation our guests receive to and from the hotel has had a direct impact on their overall experience. For this reason, we must ensure that our guests have the option of utilizing a service with pre-disclosed upfront prices. The representative says that these drivers were notified about the new on-site option and that all of them had the chance to apply for the job. At the National Harbor, I'm Makia Turner, CTV News. And many of the taxi cab drivers are employed by an independent company in Landover. Well, a day after being sworn in, appointed members joined their elected counterparts in the first general body meeting of the newly expanded Prince George's School Board. Dr. Beverly Anderson, Curtis Valentine, and Dr. David Kaufman began the meeting Tuesday night, reflecting on their past accomplishments and their goals for the upcoming school year. Of course, uh, I look forward to working with each and every member of the board to do all that can and must be done uh, so that we can deliver what the residents of Prince George's County deserve, and that is an excellent public school system. Uh, this is not about me. Um, this school reform that we've seen over the last few months is not about Sego and Eubanks or even about Rashern Baker. Uh, it's about the over 130,000 students who go to our schools uh, every day. Um, it's about the parents who entrust they, the future of their children to us. And it's about the parents who have, as Chairman said, um, taken their children out of the school system. Uh, I really want to use this opportunity to work with my colleagues, to work with students, parents, um, educators across the county um, to ensure, as the, the Chairman said, that um, we don't just have pockets of goodness or pockets of greatness, but that we have the best possible education that we can offer to every child in this county. Dr. Segun Eubanks replaces Regina Jacobs as chair of the board. Eubanks says the new school governance law signifies a new era of change. This change answers the cry uh, that many residents have had for years about uh, expanding and increasing the support for public schools among all levels of governance uh, in our system. And I think we stand at the threshold of what could very well be a shift in the educational paradigm of Prince George's County. A panel appointed by Governor Martin O'Malley is currently conducting the search for a new school's chief. Well, on June 18, 1993, police arrested 24-year-old Archie Elliott for drunk driving. While in custody, he was fatally shot by two officers. Yesterday, on the 20th anniversary of his death, Elliott's family says they are still searching for answers. To hear it, Chrisman is in District Heights with the story. It's just amazing that he lost his life in the manner in which he did, with 22 shots being fired at him and 14 of them hitting him with huge holes in the cruiser. So, I can That story describes how Dorothy Elliott's son, Archie, was killed 20 years ago. According to reports, he was on his way home from work. 
He had been drinking and was spotted swerving through this District Heights neighborhood by Jason Levitt of the District Heights Police Department and Prince George's officer Wayne Cheney. He was frisked and placed in handcuffs, but soon after he was put inside the police cruiser, he was dead. They shot him and reloaded the, gun, the guns and then opened the door and just dragged him out the car and laid him there with no help. The lady said he was just breathing, you know, I mean, she said he was just barely making it, but, you know, so he was alive and they just treated him like he was a wounded animal. Initially, police told the family that Archie was shot five times, but after fighting to see the autopsy photos of his mangled body, they later learned the truth. This is not five shots. This is like 22. He went over the body all over. He was cut up everywhere. Ms. Elliott says she never saw Archie's body before he was buried, but autopsy reports show that he had nearly 22 gunshot wounds. Those two police officers accused of the crime never served any jail time. It's my understanding that uh, the Prince George's police officer is still on the police fort. In force in Bowie, and I think the District Heights officer had gone to the Veterans Administration. Yesterday evening, a vigil was held to remember Elliot's life and bring attention to the death and the legacy he left behind. It, it, it brings back a lot. You know, it's like the old wounds open up all over again because we still have no justice. It, it's a void. Someone's missing in your family. And as family members and community leaders come together to honor his life, they also raise about the issue of police brutality. A lot of people are teaching their youngsters to just surrender right away. Whatever the officer asks you, don't give them any extra lip. Just raise your hand because they are, as they say sometimes, they're trigger happy too. And while there are still questions to be answered. A lot of people are continuing to ask, what happened to those officers who killed your son? Are they in jail? And they repeat over and over, how could this have happened? How come no one is in jail for this? Ms. Elliott says she will never stop fighting for justice. In District Heights, I'm Tahira Chrisman, CTV News. A vigil is held on the anniversary of Elliott's death every year at the site. Well, authorities have arrested a second person in connection with the murder of 14-year-old Eliezer Reyes. Prince George's police and sheriff's deputies arrested Luis Guzman Ventura in Petersburg, Virginia on Monday. Guzman Ventura was identified as a suspect shortly after Reyes was shot and killed near his Lewisdale home on December 5, 2012. He is now awaiting extradition back to Maryland.